Hello everybody, I'm your host George and welcome back to another episode of Reach Into History. Today it is time to kick off the start of a new series of videos on the French Revolution. I have split this into separate videos as I feel it is too broad a topic to condense into one short video, so today's episode will be about the causes of the French Revolution. Generally, historians take the view that the underlying cause of the French Revolution was the failure of the Ancien Régime to respond to increasing social and economic inequality. Rapid population growth and the inability to finance government debt resulted in an economic depression, unemployment and high food prices. Combined with a regressive tax system and an unwillingness to reform by the ruling elite, the result was a crisis that Louis XVI was unable to deal with. From the late 17th century onwards, political and cultural debate went from being confined to the elite to becoming part of a wider European society. This took different forms, such as the English coffee house culture, and extended to areas colonised by Europeans, particularly British North America. Transnational elites who shared ideas and styles were not new, what changed was their extent and the numbers involved. Under Louis XIV, the court at Versailles was the centre of culture, fashion and political power. Education improvements and higher literacy rates in the 18th century meant larger audiences for newspapers and journals, with Masonic lodges, coffee houses and reading clubs providing areas where people could debate and discuss ideas. The emergence of this public sphere led to Paris replacing Versailles as the cultural and intellectual hub, leaving the court isolated and therefore less able to influence opinion. In addition to these social changes, France became the most populous state in Europe when the French population grew from 18 million in 1700 to 26 million in 1789. Paris had over 600,000 inhabitants, and of these roughly one third were either unemployed or had no regular work. Inefficient agricultural methods meant domestic farms could not support these numbers, while primitive transportation networks made it hard to maintain supplies even when there was enough to go around. As a result, food prices rose by 65% between 1770 and 1790, yet real wages increased by only 22%. Food shortages were particularly damaging for the regime, since many people blamed pr price increases on government failure to prevent profiteering, which is people taking advantage in order to gain unfair profit. By the spring of 1789, a poor harvest followed by a severe winter created a rural peasantry with nothing to sell, and an urban proletariat whose purchasing power had vanished. The other major drag on the economy was state debt. Traditional views of the French Revolution often attribute the financial crisis of the 1780s to the 1778-1783 to 1783 Anglo-French War, but modern economic studies show that this is in fact untrue. In 1788, the ratio of debt to gross national income in France was 55.6% compared to 181.8% in Britain. Although French borrowing costs were higher, the percentage of tax revenue devoted to interest payments was about the same in both countries. However, these taxes were predominantly paid by the urban and rural poor, and attempts to share the burden were blocked by the regional parliaments which controlled financial policy. The resulting impasse in the face of economic distress led to calling of the Estates Generales, which became radicalised by the struggle for control of public finances. However, neither the level of French state debt in 1788 or its previous history can be considered an explanation for the outbreak of revolution in 1789. Although Louis was not indifferent to the crisis, he tended to back down when faced with any kind of opposition. The court became the target of anger for the population, especially Queen Marie Antoinette, who was viewed as a spendthrift Austrian spy and blamed for the dismissal of more progressive ministers. For their opponents, Enlightenment ideas on equality and democracy provided an intellectual framework for dealing with these issues, and the recent success of the American Revolution was seen as confirmation of their practical application. 
In conclusion, there were many factors that contributed to causing the French Revolution, such as society becoming more progressive, a growth in population, state debt, and the philosophical idea of enlightenment. It was not just one of these things that can be seen as the sole cause, rather they can each be seen as logs on the fire of revolution. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this particular video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content, and leave a comment telling me what you'd like to see next time, and whether you like this new episodic format. Also, don't forget to check my Twitter page, at reach underscore history, for video updates and more. I hope to see you again soon.